after a week off, I am well rested, batteries recharged, I feel great. Thank you guys for allowing me to take the week off and just recharge. I feel great. Oscars Odyssey. Odyssey. Today I'm back at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas to talk about a little history that's hidden but also out in the open. Now when Six Flags was originally built in 1992, it was built as the sister park to Opryland. It was owned by Galen Entertainment, not a joke, and it was built to celebrate the musical culture of Texas because we got a lot of musical culture people. Let's go check out some of the hidden things that, you know, point back to that era when it was a musical theme park. Now the first theater that you come to is actually still being used, so it's not really hidden. The Teatro Fiesta is where they used to have like mariachis come and they would play and they would have traditional Mexican music playing to, you know, for everybody around Texas who never heard it. It was really cool. And now they have this show called Vibe where they play all sorts of positively electrifying music and it's all new stuff that you know I'm not into but yeah they actually still use this one so this one's kind of not hidden I know I know this one isn't hidden but I promise you there is some hidden history here let's uh let's take a walk over to Spazberg and check out that history welcome to Spazberg I know that wasn't the best German but you know I don't even know Spanish so that should tell you where I'm coming from now walking into Spazberg, you're wondering, where would a stage be? But I've actually already talked about this in the last video. It's actually in the Sangafist Hall, where you get to eat the food. So let's go in here. I'm going to show you guys what's going on. Okay, guys, here we are. I've already showed this before, but there's a stage. And right now they have the Memphis to Motown show. And they used to have, you know, traditional German music. And I thought that was gone, but there's a dude right here setting up. You hear that? Let's go check it out. They have actual traditional German music playing, and German music has a really big um, impact on Spanish music because of the wee 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 accordion. So let's check it out. These guys are about to start. Make it a good spot. So they're actually setting up right now. The name of the band is Yodel Blitz, so you can check them out on Facebook.com slash Yodel Blitz. Um, but yeah, they specialize in, in what does it say? Blitz, blitzering polka? Now, a lot of you know polka is a German dance, you know, the like, bump, 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 bump. But, you know, in Mexico, we also have polkas. You got a little bajo sexto to it, and, you know, with the accordion, boom, boom, it's, it's amazing. I actually have a song that is my favorite polka and it's called Viva Seguin one of my favorite polkas go check it out it's not German it's Spanish but it is something to groove to you know what I'm talking about so I hope these guys get to start because I would really love to, you know to get a little tunage from them before I have to leave I don't have much time here but I said no. when they start I'll come back to them <laughs> Area. 
to Rockville City? Hi? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to the 50s town. That was cool. You know, the, the song that they were just singing when I was leaving was, In heaven there is no beer. That's why we drink it here. Right? And those are the kind of lyrics that we have in Spanish music. Like, I, I don't understand Spanish music. The only way that I know Spanish music or understand what the songs are about is because I hang around with my dad. And he will, in the Spanish song, they'll sing something like, wah, 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 wah. And my dad will say, I don't like her anymore. The devil can have her. And you know, it's things it's like, it doesn't sound like that, but it's funny. And it's like songs like that, they're just, they're just so great. We've got a nice little breeze coming. I think it's gonna rain. My glasses are broken. Did you notice that? Oh, can you believe that? I broke them because yesterday, I wasn't gonna tell you guys, but yesterday I filmed my first episode of Oscar Does. And it's Oscar Does mascotting. Now, if you guys know anything about super glue, uh, about super glue, it's that sweat deteriorates the super glue. That's how you get super glue off of you. Sweat or alcohol, you know, rubbing alcohol. But I put my head on, I'm not gonna tell you what it was, you have to watch the episode on Friday. Put my head on instant sweat, and I guess the sweat got all over my glasses, and I, they were already broken, and I already glued them, and I guess my sweat ate the glue. It was crazy, but yeah, watch out. Uh, first episode Oscar does, I become a mascot. I go to a mascot training camp. 20 other mascots all together learning from a mascot guru how to become a mascot. Now this mascot that I learned from, he used to be the backup Spurs Coyote. He used to uh, be the Rampage's uh, mascot T-Bone. He's done all sorts of things all over the country as a mascot. And um, yeah, he takes the time to train kids and people in high school and college because there's not really anything like that going on. I mean, there are a couple, but apparently his is the best. And you guys deserve the best, so I went to train with him and all the other mascots. And I just have to say, guys, I never sweated so much. So you please make sure you subscribe and watch that video on Friday when it comes out because it's going to be a hoot. Okay, now here we are. We're in Rockville City. Rockville City, Rockville High, Rockville Main Street. Now, here is the hiddenness of the history. Look, right here, they even they even have a sign here that nobody comes and raids. They used to have a show right inside this school called uh, Rockin' at Rockville High. And right in here, you would go in and you would go into the gym and they would have like a stage set up and the kids would be there and they would be, you know, showing you the, about the town. They'd be talking about the history of the town and the guys liking the girls. And it was like, like I said last time, it was like Greece without the sex. But another thing I remember, that isn't, that's hidden. We can't go in there. Now the, the um, Memphis to uh, Motown show, I honestly think it would be better suited in here because of the style of music that they play. But for, for whatever reason, it's over there in, in, in uh, the German town, Sangerfest. No, is this Sangerfest? Spasberg, my bad. Yeah, but I think it would be better suited in here because the style of music that they play, but yeah, I don't know if they're building this on the inside. They're fixing it up for that show. I have no inside information about that, but it makes more sense in here. But another thing, there used to be old 50s style cars in the streets here, and the performers would actually come out and do like numbers, like a Broadway show on the street. They would block off the street, they would come out and they would sing their shows and do their thing. And it was pretty awesome. So inside this fake school, is a theater that is no longer used. They stopped doing the Rockin' at Rockville show in uh, 2014. They retired it for some unknown reason. I mean, they should at least release it on DVD because, man, I love that show. But yeah, they used to dance all in the streets over here. It's pretty awesome. Like I was saying, the, the, the show over there, the Motown to Memphis, or the Memphis to Motown, should really be played over here because of the type. They sing these kinds of songs, like, like those kinds of songs, you know? like. Man, the, the, the last time I was there, the girls sing, um, uh, um, I'm leaving on the midnight train to Georgia. Woohoo! Right? That is my jam, guys. That is my freaking jam. I love that song. I actually wanted to cry when she sang it because it sounded so good. She sounded just like, uh, the, the, what's her name? Something in the pips. I can't remember her name right now. I'm so excited. But yeah, hidden history stage. And look, everybody's just walking by. Everybody's just walking by. These kids don't know. Something amazing. An amazing show used to go on back there. 
but now it's, I don't know what's going on. They, in my heart, I hope that they're trying to fix it up and they're trying to get it ready for the Memphis to Motown show or maybe a new show. That would be amazing. But I have no idea. I have not privy to that information. Six Flags does not email me with their plans, even though I think they should. But yeah, that's it for that hidden history. We got one more hidden stage that's not really hidden. None of these have really been hidden. And I'm sorry. I thought they would have been more hidden, but they're not. But we're headed off to Crack Actual Canyon to check out the last stage, the country stage. And for those of you asking, what's the what's the significance of the 50s style music to Texas? Why was it there in the Texas music theme park? Well, let me tell you why. Have you ever heard a little Buddy Holly, yo? He's like the king of the 50s rock. And he's from Lubbock, Texas. I actually need to go back there. I actually went up there. If you go back on my Instagram, I went to the Buddy Holly Museum. Sorry if it's loud. Went to the Buddy Holly Museum. They wouldn't let me film in there. But I did take a couple pictures with his big sunglasses and stuff like that. It was pretty awesome. But yeah, Buddy Holly, hello. Crying, waiting, hoping. A lot, I know a lot of Hispanic people, Mexican people, grew up watching La Bamba. And it was that, that scene when they're in the little bar when he's trying to play his first show with Bob on the drums. And he's like, this one's out of Lubbock, Texas. And Bob looks at him and goes, Lubbock, Texas? Crying, waiting, hoping. Talking about Buddy Holly. The best, all my love, all my kids. You don't know what you've been with no more. Oh boy, yo, me, yo boy. Great song. So yeah, look that up. Texas, Texas music history. I'm actually planning on going to the Texas Museum of Music pretty soon, I hope. If I can plan my time right, drive up there. It's, it's outside of Dallas a little, but you know me, guys. I love music. That's why, that's why I'm doing this video. The music excites me. And uh, yeah, especially Texas music. It's like the bestest music. Texas music is the bestest music. And if you don't agree, come at me, bro. So right in the middle of the park is this big stage, the one that I said where the, the D-list celebrities come and stuff like that, and they, they perform. Well, back in the day, they had big people coming. I think I remember Garth Brooks playing here once, Willie Nilly Nelson. You know, you don't get much bigger than that, but this was built on afterwards for like bigger guests. It's like a musical venue for people to come to during the summer. I still haven't seen anything yet about it being open. The train hasn't even been open yet. And I've been waiting for that. But yeah, I'm right outside of Crack Axle Canyon. Let me show you guys one more stage that isn't being used. Remember I said that building back there, right there. Mm. Used to be a radio station where you could see the DJs playing country music because this was the country music. Everybody knows where Texas is in the South. In the South, you listen to country music. And, I mean, even as a child growing up, I used to listen to nothing but country music. You know, Garth, the good country, not new country music. New country music, it sucks. I'm sorry, maybe the old person in me. But nothing on today's charts, except for maybe Chris Stapleton, comes close to anything like, you know, Johnny Cash, George Strait, Garth Brooks, the old stuff, like the stuff, the 90s. Not anything past, like, 1998 because let's be honest there's a time when artists need to stop doing stuff you need to stop creating art just for the sake of your namesake getting dragged into the mud with crappy songs but yeah what was i saying oh yeah country music very important to texas obviously we got a billion and billion and one uh country song radio stations on the radio I got one classic rock station. I'm getting, I'm getting pushed out of my own state, guys. They're kicking me out, but I can't complain. Some country music is good. None of the new stuff, like I said. A lot of the old stuff. Man, it's so good. Anyway, I'm thanking you right now. We're in Crack Actual Canyon to show you guys one stage that isn't being used and hasn't been used for quite some time. And here it is, right across from the Acme Roadrunner Express is, I think it was called the Sunset Theater. Look at this. They used to have country shows going on here. You know, like the like uh, the Grand Old Opry kind of shows going on. Like, what's that show where they're making fun of like country things, but it's country things? Where they uh, they have like those corny jokes. I can't remember. It's not the Grand Old Opry. Maybe it is? No. I don't remember. Anyway, they used to dress up in like their plaids and their Daisy Duke little shorts and their blue jeans and play fiddle and play all sorts of country music here. It was a pretty good show. I just got off the phone with Brandy. It's starting to rain. Um, I had to find out what the name of that show was. Hee Haw. Hee Haw. 
was the name of the show. They would do that style of comedy, you know, like country bumpkin kind of comedy. And it was a really good show. They had really good musicians. A ton of great musicians. She's played all the shows here. It was crazy. It was amazing. But they're not here anymore. And it's kind of sad because look at this stage. It's just it's not being used. And it's kind of sad. But that's the, that's the history of Six Flags. It's where it used to be. You know, it was right up there with Opryland. In fact, just because of that, I think I might make a trip if Opryland is even open. I don't even know. But I'm going to head out over there if it's open. I do want to go to like... Dolly Parton Land, Dolly Land, Dollywood, that's what it's called. I want to head out to all those places with you guys because I think that would be fun we, because not everybody gets to see these things. I've never seen them, so it would be a great thing to experience them with you guys, my online friends, my best friends. <laughs> They're the only friends I have. It would be fun to do stuff like that with you. Yeah, Sundance Theater, not the Sunset Theater. That's what it was called. But it, as you can see, it's starting to rain. My phone's not waterproof. Actually, it is, but... I'm not waterproof. Make sure you subscribe. The first episode of Oscar Does, Oscar Does Mascots, comes out on Friday. Please subscribe and come back and watch that show. It's gonna be funny. I become a mascot. Okay, so if you can imagine me in a costume being awkward as I am in normal life, but dressed as a costume, maybe doing some stupid dance moves, we never know. You get to see my moves. Come back and check that out on Friday. Um, Remember, I'm doing three videos a week with a Sunday Q&A video every week. So leave your comments and questions and I'll be sure to hit them up. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Ugh, it's raining, guys. And I will see you guys next time we do video. So it would be Wednesday. See you guys Wednesday. We're going to hang out with some snakes. <laughs>